All right, hey everyone, let's jump right in. Today we're looking into something that's probably on your mind more than you realize. Social media security. Mm -hmm. We all use these platforms, right? Mm -hmm. To connect and share, keep up with things. Right. But none of us want our accounts, like, taken over. Oh, absolutely not. You've sent over an article packed with great tips, and I think we should uh, highlight the most important parts, right? Hmm. Like, what are the real takeaways here? Absolutely. And it's, you know, so easy to think, oh, social media security, whatever, I might lose some photos. But the reality is the fallout can be much more serious. Okay, so really paint the picture for us. Mm -hmm. Why should people actually care about this? Like, what's the worst that could happen? Think about it. Your social media, it's like a gold mine, right? For people who want to steal your identity. Oh, wow. They can put together your personal information, maybe even enough to open credit cards in your name. Not good. Mm -hmm. And then there's the whole thing about your reputation online. Imagine someone posting something offensive from your account. It can be a nightmare to clear your name. Remember that musician a few months back? Uh, what, Hackers uh, took over their account and it was just chaos. Yeah, that's rough. And I think also, let's not forget the emotional stress of a breach. Feeling like your privacy's been violated, it's not a good feeling. Exactly. That's it can it. really mess with your sense of security. So let's talk about what we can do to protect ourselves. The article starts with strong passwords. It might seem obvious, but... Yeah, we've all heard that a million times, haven't we? Make yeah. it long, make it complex, blah, blah, blah. But I will say, there was this interesting thing in the article about password managers. Yeah. I'll admit, I've always been hesitant. It feels kind of weird handing over all my passwords to some app. I get it. The trust factor, that's huge. Yeah. But here's the deal. Good password managers, they're like Fort Knox for your logins. They use really, really strong encryption so strong that even if someone stole your device, your passwords would be completely unreadable. Plus, think about how convenient it is. It can generate super strong, unique passwords for every single website, and you only need to remember one master password to unlock them all. So it'll get to make things simpler in the long run. Oh, for sure. Big time. No more writing passwords on sticky notes or trying to remember which version you used where. And here's another great thing. A lot of these password managers, they can even autofill for you. Oh, nice. So logging in is super easy. Okay, that's starting to sway me, I got to admit. Yeah. But what if I forget that master password? That seems like, like a real problem waiting to happen. I hear you. That's a valid concern. But most good password managers have ways to recover your account, like security questions or backup codes. Oh, okay. And honestly, it's a lot less risky than using the same weak password over and over for everything. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so strong passwords, ideally using a password manager. What's the next step? Two-factor authentication, 2FA. It might sound a bit intimidating, but it's really a game changer. The article mentions it as well, and yeah, it does sound a bit techy, to be honest. No, it's pretty simple, actually. Think of it like this. You've got a bank vault with two locks, right? One is your password, and the other is a unique code that gets sent to your phone, or you can use an app to generate it. Ah. Uh -huh. So even if someone figures out your password, they can't get in without that second key. So it's like an extra layer of security to make sure it's really you trying to get in. Exactly. And the great thing is, most platforms make it really easy to set up. Just a few clicks in your security settings. We're talking Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, your email accounts. They almost all offer this. Okay, 2FA is a must do. I'm hearing that loud and clear. I'm already feeling better, haha. -ha. But the article also talks about phishing scams. Those always kind of freak me out, you know? Yeah. Those urgent emails that look like they're from your bank saying you need to log in immediately. Yeah, classic phishing tactic. They play on your emotions, hoping you'll panic and click without thinking. I've almost fallen for those before, you know. Uh, it's scary how good they look sometimes. Oh, absolutely. But you got to remember, real companies, they will almost never ask for your login details over email. Okay. So if you get an email like that, don't click anything. Instead, go directly to their website or open the app to see if there's any actual alert. So even when it seems urgent, just take a breath, think it through. Exactly. And yeah. always check the sender's email address really carefully. Uh -huh. Hover over the links before clicking to see where they actually go. Often you'll see misspellings, weird URLs. Those are the red flags. Yeah. They scream scam. Right. Those tiny details. They can be a big giveaway. It's like mm -hmm. those fake websites that almost look real, but the domain name's just a little bit off. That's a perfect example. Exactly. You got to be an online detective. Mm -hmm. Speaking of things that trip us up, let's talk about app permissions. You know, when you download an app and it wants access to your contacts, your location, or whatever. Yeah. Guilty. 
I just want to get to the app. You know, mm. I don't even read half the time. We've all been there. But those allow buttons, those can be risky. It's like imagine giving a stranger your house keys just because they asked nicely. Yeah, no way. Right. Same idea with app permissions. When you give an app access to your contacts or your photos or location data, you're giving them a lot of power. And if the app has any kind of security flaw, hackers could use that to get your info. So how do we deal with that? The article mentioned something about like reviewing and revoking permissions regularly. Yeah, that's smart. Take a look through your social media settings. See what apps are connected. Mm -hmm. Anything you don't recognize, anything you don't use anymore, just revoke access. And for the apps you do keep, Make sure they only have the permissions they absolutely need. Just minimize the risk, you know. Okay, that's a good reminder. Digital cleanup this weekend. Hmm. Speaking of minimizing risk, what about privacy settings? Mm -hmm. I used to think those were just for, like, celebrities worried about paparazzi. But the article says they're important for everyone. Absolutely. Privacy settings are all about controlling who sees what, right? And that can actually protect you from scams. Let's say you post publicly about going on vacation. Ah. Someone could see that, know you're not home, and try to target you with a phishing attempt or something even worse. Wow, I hadn't even thought of that. So it's not just about being shy. It's a security thing. Exactly. The less people know about your plans, your info, even your location, the harder it is for scammers to like build a profile on you and use that against you. It's like putting up a fence around your digital life. Makes sense. Now, the article also talked about checking your account activity, you know, like keeping an eye on things. Should we all be doing that? Absolutely. Most social media platforms, they have these activity logs, right? Yeah. They show you things like login attempts, posts, messages, any changes to your settings. It's like having a security camera for your account. Oh, I like that. If you check that log every now and then, you can spot anything that looks weird. Like a login from a device you don't recognize. That could mean someone else is in your account. The article mentioned checking for logins from strange locations. That's a red flag. So if we see something suspicious, what should we do? Change your password right away. Log out of all devices and report it to like the platform support team. You know, they can investigate and help lock things down. OK, got it. Now, you mentioned checking that log regularly. How often are we talking? Like every day? No, no. It doesn't have to be that often. Once a week, maybe every other week. Just take a quick glance. A few minutes. That's all it takes. Think of it like a quick security checkup, you know? A little bit of time now can save you a huge headache later. Okay, that sounds manageable. Now, let's talk about something I'm sure we've all done. Using public Wi-Fi. Picture this. You're at your favorite coffee shop. Sipping a latte, scrolling through social media. Seems harmless enough, right? Seems harmless, but public Wi-Fi, it can be risky. A lot of times those networks aren't secure, which means other people on that network could potentially see what you're doing online. Wait, seriously? Like, the person at the next table could be snooping? Yeah, potentially. There are tools that hackers use to intercept data on public Wi-Fi. It's kind of like someone eavesdropping on your conversation, but it's your online activity they're listening in on. Oh, that is creepy. So how can we protect ourselves? The article mentioned VPNs. VPNs are a great solution, yeah. It stands for Virtual Private Network. Basically, it creates an encrypted tunnel for all your internet traffic. Imagine it's like a secret pathway, right? Okay. Shields your data from anyone trying to peek. They just see a bunch of gibberish. So if I'm on public Wi-Fi, <laughs> VPN is a must do. OK, I'm getting that. What about using shared devices? Like the article talked about forgetting to log out of your account on a friend's phone. Right. That's another one people don't always think about. Might seem like a small thing, but it can have big consequences. Someone could use your account to send messages, pretend to be you or even worse. Oh, wow. Yeah. That could really damage relationships, spread false information, not good at all. Exactly. And it's not just friends' phones, right? I think about public computers, like at a library or even a work computer if you check social media during a break. Right. Always, always log out completely when you're done. So, bottom line, be extra cautious on shared devices. Log out. Exactly. Simple habit can save you a lot of trouble. It's like, trust but verify. Yeah. Right. Enjoy the convenience, but stay sharp protect yourself. Exactly. And you know, the article made a good point about keeping up with security breaches. Technology is always changing. So are the ways people try to hack you. Got to stay on top of it. So how can we like stay ahead of the curve? What can people actually do? I have a challenge for you. Pick one social media platform, the one you use the most, and find their security settings page. Spend a few minutes, poke around, see what's there. 
Oh, okay. You might be surprised what you find. That's a great idea. Yeah. It's like knowing where the fire extinguisher is, you know. You might not need it now, but better safe than sorry. Exactly. Knowledge is power. The more you know about those settings, the better you can protect yourself. And honestly, just knowing where to look Mm -hmm. makes you feel more in control. Like, okay, I got this. That's the feeling we want you to have empowered, in control. Well, I definitely feel more informed after this. This deep dive was super helpful. Thanks for explaining it all so clearly. You're very welcome. Happy to chat about it. And remember, staying safe online, it's an ongoing thing, right? It's not like you do it once and you're done. So true. We have to keep learning, keep adapting as things change. Yeah. But at least we're starting with a good foundation now. That's the key. Well, that wraps it up for our deep dive into social media security. We hope this was helpful and that you feel more confident about protecting yourself online. Check out the show notes. We'll have links to all the resources we mentioned, Mm -hmm. including that article. It was great. Senator. And as always, thanks for listening. Stay safe out there.